Hello everyone, in this video we are going to prove the Bolzano's Intermediate Value Theorem. So let's get started. And please subscribe to make sure your maths teacher never gets mad at you. This is the statement of Bolzano's Intermediate Value Theorem. I will also explain this statement using a figure. But uh, first let's see what the statement says. So let i be an interval and i is a subset of the set of real numbers and let a function f defined from i to the set of real numbers and this function f is also continuous on i now let any two elements a and b from the domain of f and one element k from r real num the set of real numbers and the range of f and they satisfy the condition that k lies between the images of a and b then there exists a point C from the domain of F and C lies between A and B such that K is basically the image of C. Also, if you want to refresh the concept of continuous function, watch my detailed video on it linked in the description box down below. And now let's move towards the uh, figure description of the statement. Let a function F is defined from I a subset of real numbers to the set of real numbers and f is a continuous function here then for any two elements a and b in i if an element k from the range of f and k satisfies the condition that it lies between f of a and f of b then we have to prove that there exists a point C in I laying between A and B and on applying the function F on C we get K. So basically K is equal to F of C. I hope you understand the statement of Bolzano's Intermediate Value Theorem. Now let's move towards this proof. To start off we suppose A is less than B. As the statement of Bolzano's value theorem does not give us the information about whether A is less than B or greater than B, so we take both cases one by one. Now as A is less than B, we let a function f of x minus k and we call that function g of x. So we can see that g of A is equal to f of A minus k and g of B is equal to f of B minus k all right so by keeping in mind the supposition from the statement that f of a is less than k which is less than f of b we are certain that g of a is negative and g of b is positive you might be wondering how well because k is greater than f of a so the answer for f of a minus k must be negative and similarly, as k is less than f of b, the answer for f of b minus k must be positive. And we can write these two observations in the form of one single inequality like this. g of a is less than 0, which is less than g of b. Or you can say g of a is less than 0 and g of b is greater than 0. Now let's move towards the next part of the proof. Now let's recall the location of Root's theorem which helps us proceed further. So the location of Root's theorem says that let i be a closed interval and let f be a function defined from the interval i to the set of real numbers and f is continuous on i. If f of a is less than 0 which is less than f of b or if f of a is greater than 0 which is greater than f of b then there exists a point c which belongs to the open version of i such that f of c is equal to zero one thing you need to observe here that i is a closed interval and c belongs to the open interval okay so as we have already seen that g of a is less than 0 which is less than g of b. So according to the location of Root's theorem, 
there exists a point C and C lies between A and B such that G of C is equal to 0 and we call this equation equation number 2 because we are going to use it later. But by equation number 1 which is f of x minus k equals to g of x we can see that g of c is equal to f of c minus k and we call this equation equation number 3 but by combining these two equations i mean equation number 2 and equation number 3 we get f of c minus k equals to 0 which implies that f of c is equal to k which is what we need to prove. But where are you going? This proof is not finished yet. We have to examine the other case, which is A is greater than B. Now we are going to examine the second and last case of this proof. We suppose that B is less than A or A is greater than B. And we also let a function k minus f of x and we call that function h of x. We can also see that h of a is equal to k minus f of a and h of b is equal to k minus f of b. We are actually repeating the same steps uh, just with a different function. So now by keeping in mind f of a is less than k which is less than f of b we can see that h of a is positive now and h of b is negative. How? Well, you already know the answer and if you do not know the answer, then um, rewind this video and watch the first part of the proof. So now we can observe that h of b is less than 0, which is less than h of a. Now, similarly, we are going to apply the location of roots theorem and, location, and by location of roots theorem, we have concluded that h of c is equal to 0 and we call that equation number 5. But we know by equation number 4 that k minus f of x is equal to h of x. We can see that h of c is equal to k minus f of c and by combining equation number 5th and equation number 6th we get that k minus f of c is equal to 0 which implies that f of c is equal to k. Finally by combining both the cases um, a is less than b uh, or a is greater than b we have now proved that f of c is equal to k so that concludes the proof and i hope you guys enjoyed and uh, learned something from the proof i will see you guys all in my next video till then bye